Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, October 16th, around 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time 2022. We have got some a big show for you today. There is a lot going on across the planet. We have Grimm's Volten and a micro tremor uptick, which could be sensing an eruption. We also have Katla in Iceland with a small flurry of activity just moments ago and the ongoing threat at Mauna Loa and the seismic swarm in Hawaii. But the big story, winter storm warning, up to 18 inches of snow for Michigan's upper peninsula. Keep calm. It's boom time. A very early blast of cold is headed into the upper peninsula of Michigan, and that is not the only place, and we'll get to that. We have winter-like cold to charge across eastern U.S. with snow for some. And here we are at the Forecast Center tracking potentially record-breaking cold in the south and snow in the Great Lakes. Here is the next cold front. Temps averaging 15 to 20 below average all the way down to southern Florida. So, heads up. As it cools off. Now, here are the winter storm watches and warnings for the Upper Peninsula in Michigan. You can see there are winter storm advisories and freeze watches and freeze warnings for up to two feet of snow in the bullseye and a large area of potentially, let's say, five to ten. So this is going to be a big event for some. And let's see uh, what they have to say here. The National Weather Service at Marquette says... About the winter storm warning area, heavy wet snow begins tonight and continues through Monday night, resulting in poor travel conditions with total snow accumulations of 8 to 16 inches in the higher terrain a few miles inland from Lake Superior, with locally higher totals approaching 2 feet possible across Michigan highlands. Winds gusting as high as 45 miles per hour will cause drifting through Monday afternoon then as high as 50 miles per hour Monday night. So heads up in the Upper Peninsula. Now the season's first accumulating snow also falling in Wisconsin. Take a look at that gorgeous picture. And there are some small totals, one to three inches for most areas. But certainly a beautiful start to the season. Flood threat for areas in the southwest. Much colder temperatures arrive for the Midwest. Take a look at the map. A huge swath in the center here of freeze warnings. Bring in or harvest your fruits and vegetables before they get destroyed. This is going to be a long, cold event. High moisture content continues for areas of the southwest into Texas through Sunday with the threat of flash flooding. Meanwhile, dry weather, air quality, and fire weather concerns, as well as record high temperatures, are forecast for portions of the Pacific Northwest. You can see here there is poor air quality and wind warnings. So heads up if you're up there. A strong cold front will be sweeping southward across the Midwest where much colder temperatures and some snow are expected near the Great Lakes. Let's take a look at the models. Well, we just got a new model in and it's only showing us four hours. That's plenty for this run here. You can see the moisture across the Southwest pouring in Arizona all day yesterday. There should be some rain there continuing today as well as most of New Mexico and North and West Texas really needing this moisture very in a very bad way. And it's going to be raining there through Monday and into Tuesday, especially Texas. You can see the snow bombing out up here into Michigan and that system moving into the northeast. Let's take a look at the total snowfall on the map and walk it through. So here we have Sunday into Monday. That up, uh, We're going to be seeing some snow moving into northern Wisconsin there. And then it hits Michigan by Monday morning. And it looks like uh, up in Ontario here, we could be seeing some heavy snow totals. We could also be seeing some light snow in eastern Indiana, northern Ohio, western PA, most of West Virginia mountains, and western New York as the system moves Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday across the northeast. Take a look at that. This is the Tuesday snow coming in there. Monday, Tuesday is your chance in Ohio, Indiana, western PA. So heads up for the global warming goodness. Now, Hawaii's largest active volcano, on the planet is hit by a five magnitude yesterday. I'm sure a lot of you know about this rumbler. A five magnitude earthquake was the strongest of a series of tremblers that struck Friday on Hawaii's Mauna Loa, the largest active volcano on the planet that scientists say is in a state of heightened unrest. Smaller aftershocks followed. The series started with a 4.6 magnitude quake seconds before the larger 5.1 struck. So 
Here, we'll leave you links to the USGS information statement on the Mauna Loa earthquakes so you can read directly from the scientists on site what their thoughts are. Now, my thoughts are that this is an increasing event, specifically, especially in the Pahala region. This is in a flank area where if either of Kilauea or Mauna Loa come active, we could have some lava making it to the ocean here in Fishers in the Pahala region. It could also be the emplacement of magma into Mauna Loa. But we can see that most of the Mauna Loa activity is right up at the caldera, which suggests that that magma is directly underneath the caldera. So stay tuned for the Mauna Loa eruption to occur and for us to be covering it. Now, let's take a look. Seismic update. We had a big trembler moments ago, 6.3 off the coast of Central America. There was no tsunami warning. So that is good news there. <clears throat> but generally, overall, we have no quakes of note for the country. We have a cent uh, little central Alaska tumbler there in the west coast here. We have a 3.1 near Anderson Springs. Uh, potentially San Andreas related um, and worldwide looking quite quiet except for the 6.3. That probably affected no one. It was far offshore. Now, here's some good news on the earthquake front. A new paper coming out that we're going to share all links below with you here. Case control study on a decade of ground-based magnetometers in California reveals a modest signal. Yes, 24 to 72 hours prior to earthquakes. So this could definitely be an earthquake warning system. And they're just looking into it. And this study shows, well, that small changes in magnetic fields are precursors to large earthquakes. So we could have an earthquake warning system in place in the near future. Now, let's go over to Worldwide Volcano News. We have a lot of unrest going on, especially in Iceland. So we just covered the Mauna Loa seismic uptick, which suggests that Mauna Loa may erupt in the near future. But we also had a recent Jokulip, or glacial outburst flood from Grimsvotn, which let occurred last week. It has ended yesterday or the day before, um, but during the entire glacial outwash, the micro tremor has been increasing and it peaked yesterday and I thought maybe Grimm's Volton was about to erupt, but the activity is waning today. Not down to background levels. So something is happening at Grimm's Volton and it could be about to blow because oftentimes when the glacial outburst flood reduces the pressure on the top of the caldera, it allows that magma to push up to the surface. So we're going to keep a close eye on that for you as Grimm's Volton may be setting itself up for a boom. Also, Katla this morning. All of a sudden, an earthquake swarm started in Katla in the Maidershjulku Glacier. Very hard to pronounce. The largest earthquake at writing had a magnitude of 3.8. We do have the seismic swarm here. It's about 13 quakes all in a bundle right on top of that volcano. And this is a very dangerous volcano, Katla, down here in the south. And the actual caldera is exactly where this seismic swarm is happening. So very interesting information. Katla is a very dangerous and deadly volcano with eruptive potential. VEI 4 and 5 is the norm. Here is the eruptive, eruptive history. The last large eruption, 1918, and about every 40 to 60 years of VEI 4, 3, or 5. VEI 4 and 5 is the norm. 1580, 1612, 1625, 1660, 1721, 1750. So we are at one of the longest lulls in activity. Here we can see 40, 58 years. So this baby, it's about time. For some boom and we'll keep a close eye on Katla for you as it appears to be uh, experiencing a little bit of unrest up at the caldera. Let's take a look at worldwide volcanoes other than the ones we just looked at. We have Chevaluge puffing to 12,000. One of my favorite volcanoes has been back on the list here, Chikorachki. Chikorachki, say that five times fast. Puffing to 14,000 feet. A laid volcano, 13,000 feet. Take a look at the streamer coming from that puppy. This uh, alade is easy to find in the Kamchaktas or the Kurils. Just come down on the tip of Kamchatka, look left, there's a little island over there. So that's an easy one to find if you're looking, looking through the Google Maps. 
No other volcanic activity of note. So let's check out space weather. As we can see, the sun went quiet for 24 hours. There is a slight uptick in activity up into the sea range now. But overall, our sun is blank. Now, what do I mean by blank and why is that important? Well, we are in the three years of what is known as solar max. 2023 four is the solar max years. And so we have entered solar max. The only problem is the disk is blank. Now, during a normal solar maximum, usually the sun is peppered with numerous dark objects called sunspots. And during solar minimum, the disk is blank. And here we are approaching solar max, and the disk is blank. Grand solar minimum much? Now, astronomers are captivated by the brightest flash ever seen. The picture shown here on October 14th, 2022, shows the Swift X-rays telescope capturing the afterglow of GRB 22109A about an hour after it was first detected. Now, this is pretty funny. This object, astronomers have observed the brightest flash of light ever seen from an event that occurred 2.4 billion light years from Earth. That is a like a fifth of the entire <laughs> span of the uh, universe here, and it's very far away. Look at that little faint red dot. Now, the funny thing is that this scientist says it's really breaking records, both in the amount of photons and the energy of the photons that are reaching us. And then he goes on to say, something this bright, this nearby, is really once in a century event. This is the lead scientist. Something this bright and this nearby. 2.4 billion light years from Earth. According to this, top scientist is nearby. Clown world. Now let's talk about more clown world and propaganda. Here is the CNNer. Lake Mead water crisis is exposing volcanic rock from eruptions 12 million years ago. Well, that makes me think that this is like a 12 million year drought. Wow. Completely disingenuous title. All of the rocks in, in that area are 12 million years old. So there is that. But if you look at this article that just came out the other day, and it reads, Lake Mead's falling water level has exposed several shocking things in recent months. Lake Mead's falling water level has exposed several shocking things in recent months. Well, in recent months, Lake Mead is rising. It's risen six feet in the last two and a half months. It's not falling. It fell in the spring, ding, ding. And so the, whoever wrote this article didn't even look at the water levels in Lake Mead. They just said it's been falling in recent months when, in fact, it's the exact opposite. Propaganda much? Here's more propaganda. Billions of snow crabs have disappeared from the waters around Alaska. And it's not overfishing. Guess what it is? Yeah, it's your fault. It's climate change. The only problem with that is it's not true. Here we are at the lowest levels of snow crabs ever in the Bering Sea. Now, the only problem with that is, is because the population varies cyclically. And at times when there's major storms up in the Bering Sea, like back in the 2000s here, the population declines to almost zero. Here in 2010, female red king crabs, there were none of them back in 2010. There's at least 1.4 million in 2021. So these populations go up and down and they are completely obliterated when there are major storms. And if you've been following our channel, some very major storms have made it up into the Alaska region over the last several months. Literally changing the dynamics of the seafloor, and preventing these crabs from coming in in peak populations when there are no storms, like back in last year, which is the highest population ever of snow crabs in the Bering Sea. But they don't tell you that. They just say it's your fault that their crab levels are almost zero this year, when it, in fact, has nothing to do with you, as usual. Now, here's some more baffling science. Recent whale strandings highlight the mystery that still baffles marine scientists. Now, why no one gave them a chart is beyond me. 
Now these animals use the magnetic field of Earth for navigation. And in case you didn't get the memo, marine biologists, the southern magnetic pole is rapidly moving. It is nowhere near the rotational pole. It is, in fact, hundreds, thousands of miles away from the south rotational pole. And it's moving towards Indonesia at a rate of over 10 miles per year. In just one year, if those whales are off 10 miles, they're beached. And so it's not baffling. And the propaganda that comes out in these articles is to disinform you on what's happening with the magnetic excursion that we're experiencing. And the recent whale strandings highlight the fact that the field, the South Pole, is moving very rapidly and confusing migratory animals, beaching them, in fact. It's not a mystery. It's called science. Now, here's more insanity. Sleepy Joe is pushing ahead research to cool Earth using stratospheric aerosol injection. This is literally the mass extinction of the population. If you watched our radio show last night that we replayed on Magnetic Reversal News, you heard that if you put things up in the stratosphere, they tend to stay there for a long time. And what if you make a mistake? There's no way to get that out of there. This is some of the worst junk science based on non-science, climate change, to save the planet. What's wrong with the planet? There's nothing wrong with the climate. The temperature has been the same for decades. Hurricanes are not increasing in strength or size. They're decreasing. The entire narrative is false. And now they want to destroy the earth on purpose. You know, the smartest man on earth, the most popular president ever is doing this for you. Just like Monsanto created PCBs, which have polluted the planet forever. In case you didn't know. Oh, and they changed their name to Bayer, which they did in the past. It goes from Monsanto to Bayer, back to Monsanto, back to Bayer. It depends on how many billions of dollars in lawsuits they have following them. Now here, Burlington, Vermont, school district is going to sue Monsanto for PCBs that contaminated and shut down their high school. Most high schools are contaminated with PCBs in the caulk in the windows, in the glue in the floors. It is everywhere. It's pervasive. And it doesn't go away. It has no half-life. It can never be removed. Monsanto has polluted the planet forever. And now they're doing it with your food. Absolutely disgusting. Good news, though, Beyond Meat has cut almost 20% of its workers, including the COO who's accused of biting a man's nose in a road rage incident. Apparently, he's not vegan. But the stock crashes, and I can assure you that no one wants to eat this overprocessed carcinogenic garbage. They can't even give it away here, but we do live in grass-fed beef land here. So we can get some of the best locally sourced meat anywhere on earth here. But if you're in a major city, you got to eat this processed poison. But apparently not a lot of people are liking it. The stock is crashing. Shut up, Al! (laughs) Good on you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Please take some time. I'll link it here. Watch the radio show from yesterday if you're interested in cosmic catastrophe, geoengineering, or any of those esoteric topics. Leah and I go into great detail. And we love each and every one of you. Be a hero and share this video. 